Okay, uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, this is uh, a session called Let's co create the Green Deal Data Space. I wonder what we are going to do because I have a uh, little, little bad news. And this is my friend uh, Quentin Groom who was not feeling well today. So he's telling me about a cold, I suspect about uh, the party yesterday, uh, but uh, one way or the other, uh, <laughs> he is not able to, to, to come. So we will, we will see what we can do. Um, this should be a session of uh, co-creation. I have here uh, colorful notes and uh, some pens, uh, but uh, we are not many. So actually I'm unsure uh, what we can achieve with what we, what we are. We will see. Anyway, so the original plan was actually to have an introduction to the concept of data spaces uh, and all these things that bothers me. Uh, everybody knows that when I do a presentation, I don't present about what I know. I present about what bothers me. And uh, this is something that I cannot, you know, correct uh, on, on myself. So you will see some uncertainties here and there. And that's why we, we could later uh, start a discussion. Uh, so, first things first, what is a data space? Because, you know, there is, a, there is one problem with, with these concepts. Everybody believes that knows what it is because the name. So, let's, let's give it a try. What is a data space? <laughs> a space with data? Uh, <laughs> No, more or less, that, that, that's the thing. So what, what is really a data space if, we, if you really follow the definition of the people that did that definition? There is an international uh, association that is called the, the International Data Space Association, and they define the data space as a very precise uh, thing. I wonder about how I can move this away. Uh, well, anyway. Ah. Perfect. Um, so they say that uh, spaces enable data sharing understood as uh, through trustworthy data exchange between uh, a certified data provider and a certified recipient based on a mutual agreement. So it's not that you take your data and say, here it is, get it. It is, I'm going to you and uh, I'm using you again, sorry for that. Uh, I'm going to you and I say, I have a nice data set. Are you interested? Let's, let's make a contract. And then we will store the contract in something that is called the federator with some metadata and, and so on. And you, you will be able to search for the, that, that particular item, but only you, because we signed that contract. This was the, the initial intention of the data spaces. So you have to understand this is like going to a shop to, to you know, or a shop or, or a bank and deal with for, for something. And maybe in this conversation that we will, we will have and this agreement, there will be a monetary change. Or you will give me another data set in exchange or something or something like that. But you will trust me because you will know who I am. This is the first thing. I will trust you because you will present some kind of a, certifi a certification, like in the internet uh, certification, maybe an ID card, and I will know ah, you are that guy. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then we will do the exchange. So this is not about open data at all. And this is what really bothers me because the, there is an expectation and the data space is just a space full of data. Uh, and, and that is not what it was initially designed for. Uh, so there will be a data exchange request, and there will be a, an, a, an accountability for performance and some logging. So if you are real access, you really access my data, there will be some blog saying, this guy has downloaded this data in this particular day, so there will be some sovereignty from my part, because if you start using the data in a way that is different from the contract, I will go to you and I will say, I know you downloaded it, so, <laughs> so you are now accountable. No? So that, that's the thing. Um, so there are constraints and, and so on. No? And as, as you as participant, you will be registered and identified and authorized. This is, this is more or less the schema. All right, so, so what we are going to do with this? 
uh, how do you build that in practice? So, uh, you know, this is done by computer scientists. So, of course, they believe this should be solved by some kind of a software component. And they call that the connector. So, you will not go to the internet directly, but you will set up in your computer some kind of a connector. How to do that in practice? Uh, I, I haven't done that in practice, but I heard that if you have a Linux machine, you download some kind of a Docker thing, and you will set up all this machinery. Uh, and uh, you will have a, an HTTP endpoint there, and uh, maybe you will have some data source, so you will be in this part of the, of the screen and offer these, and uh, then you will go to the metadata broker and know the, the details of, of, of your data, and finally there will be a data exchange. They insist about these dashed lines that are metadata uh, communications and these, uh, how they are called, uh, solid lines that, that are the data that transfers, no? There is a clearing house that is, uh, again, uh, how it's called, a false friend, uh, because for me a cleaning house was again some place where you could go and get data. No, that's not a cleaning house. In this case, a cleaning house is a house where you are cleared for, so you are authorized to. So the cleaning house is, is looking for these authorizations and finally you have some kind of a app store uh, down there. I have some explanations about, about this and uh, hopefully this, this uh, slide will be shared. So one thing is the data apps, for instance, they allow for small processing. Uh, so because maybe when we set up the contract, you told me I only accept GeoTIFFs. So actually I'm doing NetCDF, so maybe we will arrange a machinery to create the, the GeoTIFFs for you on the flight. These, the, these are these small transformations that I, that I believe they are talking about. Um, the, there is a, the, a metadata broker that, that registers and publishes and maintains the, the connectors, that means the actual nodes that, that, that are participating in this data space. Uh, as, a, as I say, this, there is this cleaning house for clearing and authorizing and billing and controlling use. And finally, we need to agree on concepts because if we start dialogue you and me about a uh, land use uh, product and uh, your concept of land use is more close to land cover, we are lost. Uh, no? so, uh, so we need to agree on vocabularies and uh, vocabularies are, are, are absolutely essential uh, here. The connector is the one that allows the, the data exchange so that the, the data transfer is done through the connector. And uh, finally, there is this uh, identity providers at, at the top that I didn't talk much about, but this is the normal mechanism that they use in the internet to know who is who. Uh, so to some kind prevent anonymous uh, interactions or, uh, you know, people identifying as, as other people, of course. Because everything here is about creating this digital economy. So you need trust in all the systems, so the system needs to be solid somehow. So there is a component of security in it. Yes, but how to do it in practice? So you go to the International Data Space Association and there is a getting started there. The, you can find Docker images, so you could, in principle, deploy a, connect, a connector in your premises and then start connecting to, to other people. Uh, okay, I, in this discussion, I oversimplified because I was talking about you and me. Like, if, if only you and me were a part of the data space, of course there will be another agreement with you. Uh, and uh, you and me will exchange, and then there will be an agreement with you, with him, and this is going to configure the data space. And you will be a connect. You will have one of these connectors in your machinery. You will have one of these connectors in my ma in your machinery. I will have a connector in my machinery. This is how it's supposed to work. There are more connectors than the ones in in the International Data Space Association, like the Clips connector, for instance. That's another possibility. Uh, I have no idea how how interoperable they are. Uh, I apologize uh, about that. I haven't I haven't checked. Most probably they are not. <laughs> but uh, but I'm, I am not sure. Uh, okay, but uh, do I really need all this if I'm only interested in, in open data? I really don't know. Uh, 
sorry. I really don't know, uh, and that's that's why I was checking, and uh, I will come back to this slide later. But I was checking this particular chapter uh, in this book that actually is called International Vector Space as a Foundation for Open Data. And I thought, okay, this is precisely what is bothering me: how to do open data in the data space. Is that possible or not? Uh, they tell it is. They tell that the, the, all this machinery stuff about the connectors is still useful because there will be then a clearing house, there will be uh, some place for tokens, people will already be identified. You will know each other at least, you will have more statistical data about what you are exchanging. But I really don't believe this is the right approach because we have been doing that for ages without connectors. Uh, we set up Inspire without connectors. Uh, we have set up uh, the Acknowledge Hub without connectors. So, do we really need those connectors? Uh, so this is this is the thing. No, and uh, uh, and I apologize if there is someone for the for the commission here uh, from the commission here. But the commission has a dual heart in this thing, uh, and I believe I'm not I'm not saying anything that. Everybody knows. On one hand, they want to deploy this digital economy. They are convinced that data is this oil that is going to create a revolution in new businesses and so on. And we are seeing some examples of that already working. But on the other side, they are talking about uh, better use of public health data for research and the common good and, and all these. So those are literal sentences that I took from different places. Uh, so. Uh, it is clear that this duality of data spaces with this trust and this security and this uh, exchange peer-to-peer -peer is intended. It is also true that uh, our open environment where you can share data uh, uh, openly is also intended. Uh, so we will see how we can reconcile that. And uh, we have to do that at least uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten times. Uh, because we have uh, at least foreseen ten different data spaces. Uh, the one that is uh, occupying my days and nights and uh, dreams and nightmares is the Green Deal uh, data space. Um, why? Uh, the first thing is. Uh, there are several topics in the green data space. It's not that I'm going to talk about agriculture. That is relatively easy, relatively, because of course agriculture is related to climate, etc. So I'm lying here. But this is particularly heterogeneous because we can have a silo on climate change. We could have a silo on circular economy. We could have a silo on pollution. We could have a silo on biodiversity. We could have a silo on deforestation. And we do not want that. Definitely, the, to me, the, the Green Deal of the Space is one of the most heterogeneous and multidisciplinary of all. Uh, so that's, that's where we have a, channel, a challenge, because if we try to impose to all these sectors, to, to, to all these sectors, they, in their machines, they have to set up all these connector stuff. I don't think we will be able to convince them, even if the Commission has more power than me. But I don't, I don't know if even the commission is able to convince them. This is, this is what I'm, I'm saying, no? And on the other hand, we have the, the old way of doing things, no? The, 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 the OGC standards, the APIs uh, that, that, are, that are new. So we knew how to do some of these uh, things in, in, in open data, no? So we really need to extend the definition of data space, uh, and we need still to keep the trust, the governance, and the data sovereignty that is intended also in open data. So that's the question, how to reconcile the OGC standards with the international data space approach. Breaking news. Uh, today, I have received this email, and you cannot imagine how happy I was. Uh, I was on, on plenary there, and, I, uh, and my colleagues had to containment and made me shut up because I was making noise <laughs> uh, about that. No, I was even having a dance there, uh, <laughs> a celebration. Uh, because the OGC and the International Data Space Association has signed a memorandum of understanding 
What does it mean? I have no idea. Uh, probably this means that they at least recognize that there is an issue. Well, that's a good start. No? Uh, we need to help them on trying to find the solution because this is the start of the solution only, recognizing that the problem is there. Um, so there, there will be conversations about the secretariats uh, of both associations, uh, but there will be also technical conversations below. I'm more interested in the second ones. So this is my proposal, and I have been thinking about this for a while. This is a modification of an uh, initial diagram of the International Data Space Association. They, they talk about an exemplary connector, no? one of those. Please do not interpret this as a centralized uh, architecture. This is not an architecture diagram. This is an architect. This is a diagram that represents one exemplary connector. Maybe you. Uh, no, and uh, you want to connect with the metadata catalog, or maybe with a knowledge base that is another kind of metadata catalog in the, in the different in a different place. You maybe want to connect to sensor data using sensor thing API, or you might want to connect to coverage and feature data uh, using the old WCSs, WFSs, or the new OGC coverages and features. You might want even to want to analyze data, uh, uh, or you are just a client representing uh, data. So all this could be done in an open environment, and I call this an open node, or could be done through, the, through a connector, where these connectors are, are actually linked to those other different components of the machinery that I was talking about. No? So, and this is what we, we would like to experiment uh, in a project that I'm coordinating that is called All Data for Green Deal. Yeah, I made a record. I was talking about these topics for four, uh, uh, 25 minutes without even mentioning the name of the project. Uh, that, 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 <laughs> that, that is a good thing, I believe, no? Because you, you, I'm, uh, we are here to discuss, not to make publicity of what we are doing, I believe. Um, so, well, this is, this is what I'm uh, more or less interested in. This is the solution I'm proposing, and this is what we are going to experiment. And maybe uh, next edition of this event next year, we can present you with the results of what happened. Uh, talking more about what we intend in the green deal space and the discussions there, there are two standard approaches to, to data that intrigues us more. There is a project that is called Usage that is doing things in urban. Actually, the U is about urban. The other part of the acronym I don't remember. Uh, they are going to use Sensor Thing API, and uh, and we also want to experiment with us. And uh, then there is Quentin uh, that wanted to be here but but couldn't in the B3 project and FerryCube also using data cubes. So we want to collaborate with, with them using data cubes. So these, these are the two experiments, how to use those things in an open environment as well as in the protected environment of the uh, data space. We also want to work on vocabularies as well as uh, the International Data Space Association with that vocabulary connector that I showed you before. Uh, so we want to use semantics and uh, we are preparing two things. The Super Drupal Green Deal Data Space Information Model. Uh, I'm not sure this is going to help a lot because, you know, it's so heterogeneous. Of course, we need to understand and agree on the concepts, but we need to be very careful because every actor in, in this will already have their definitions. So maybe there is another approach that is not so Super Drupal, but it's equally important for me that this actually detect the variables that are in the data sets. So there are observed properties that should be clearly defined, uh, like, I don't know, climate change, so temperature, pollution, uh, MP 2.5, uh, deforestation, well, you, you lost me there, uh, how it's called, biomass, no? Uh, bi biomass lost, think these kind of things that needs to be defined and we need a clear definition of those numbers 
because those are things that are quantifiable, they are measured. So we need to know the name of the variable, the concept behind the variable, and the units of measures of the variable, and eventually we need to link that with uh, the framework of the essential variables that is developed uh, in GEO and beyond. And we need to build trust, and the trust can also be linked by providing the provenance. So explaining clearly not just what you are measuring, but how you are doing that, which are the processes that, uh, you know, started with some kind of a sensor and then some kind of a quality filtering uh, and then some kind of a data aggregation. You need to explain all that in a, some kind of a provenance metadata. Uh, and the last line I mentioned that several times in this uh, thing. So, and this is what, what we wanted to do, and uh, maybe we can still do. Do you want to have some kind of a discussion here in small groups? Uh, or do you prefer sit comfortable in your comfortable zone? Uh, <laughs> uh, give, give me some feedback, please. First of them was, sit comfortable? Ah. <laughs> so, uh, so we wanted to use this schema that is called the wall cafe. Uh, we don't have much time, so we will see what we can do. But the whole idea is people are distributed in three different spaces. Uh, maybe we will have, I believe we, we have enough people for three spaces. Uh, so, this table, each space has a fixed moderator and a fixed topic, and it remains there. But uh, after a while the discussion starts, the, there is an alert, and you have to move to another table. But don't worry, because the knowledge of what you collected remains on the table. So the moderator, uh, after the change, presents the status and continues the discussion. And this way, the, the discussion is incremental with new knowledge provided by the wisdom of the new people. Uh, so this is how it works. And uh, maybe this is the possibility we are going to use. Uh, Yvette and Damiano will drive uh, a small discussion of which kind of services the Green Deal data space should include. Uh, you can base that on the different topics that we were discussing and which are the variables that you believe could be more important and so on. Uh, Kaori will, where is Kaori? There. You should, you should be a little bit farther than these two guys. These two guys can remain here, you could, could go a little bit there. Uh, what kind of open data, or maybe protected and sensible data, the Green Deal data space should include. And uh, down there, uh, I might be, uh, with other people, trying to discuss how the this project that organized this event, the Openness Monitoring uh, Consortium of Cyberspace, uh, what this consortium could provide in terms of the data they are doing or, or the things we have been hearing around for a while. 